Greetings, my brothers and sisters. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank God for his goodness, his kindness, his truth, and mercy, and all of his bountiful and wonderful blessings. He has taught upon us and what he had to do. We thank him. Good to see everyone. Sister Kath. And, and little buddies, good to see y'all. <laughs> <Today, laughs> oh, shucks. So now you want to begin uh, I guess based the continuation of, of last week, we only did one verse last week, which was verse number one of the 11th chapter of uh, Revelations. Uh, we may get one tonight too, I don't know. Uh, whatever the Lord says, we're going to do that. And it was a great one last Wednesday. Great one. So we look at two and, two and three tonight. And the Lord says the same. Let's pray. Most gracious and all wise Father, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your tender mercy, and all of your bountiful and wondrous blessings. You have stored upon us, and even what you are yet to do, we thank you. God, we thank you that we're able to come to your house once again and able to see each other once again. It's a blessing as well to pray to God. We need thanks and the praise God. We don't take this lightly, God. Uh, we highly uh, reverence just being able to see each other once again. Uh, we thank you for that, God. We pray you get everything we've done and said tonight that will bring you honor and bring you glory. God, it's all about you, and it's all about you receiving the glory and the honor. We thank you, God. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. We pray and we do thank you. Amen and amen. The second verse and the third verse of the 11th chapter of the book of Revelations, verse 2, and I'm reading from the King Jimmy, King James Version, and it reads as follows. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot. I'm in 10. Just hold on a second. That's wrong. Okay, here we go. This is the right one. But the court which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. The holy city shall they tread under foot. 42 months. Verse 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy. Watch this. A thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. Well, we, let me just do this real quick. Last week we talked about worship. Talked about measuring. Measuring uh, inside the temple. Measuring the altar. Measuring worship. Now we're going to get into don't what, what you not to, to, to measure. And we're going to find out why you're not to measure this. He says, but, that means it's a shift from last week, from measuring worship, altar, and the temple of the sanctuary. He goes and says, but, which shifts, the court, which is without the temple. And I'll hit subject right quickly. Without the temple, leave out, and measure it not. For it is given unto, what's it, unto the Gentiles. I mean, so of course it's been. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot 42 months. I got to ask two questions now. Yes, you're on the frame trying to count. Uh, <laughs> I see you. I'm going by. I see you. I'm a preacher. <laughs> the first question I want to ask, he says, but the court. Which is out with, without the temple, leave out. This court, uh, without the temple, this court, what is, what is, do you know what the court is? He says, but the court, which is without the temple, leave out. What is this court? And measure it not. Say something if I, I can't do that part of your answer. <laughs> but the court, that word court, what does that really 
sin. What is it? And if and and somebody's gonna have a different translation, pretty gonna give you the answer. So, <laughs> huh? I know you were considering. <laughs> you can't answer. <laughs> Not right then, anyway. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, it is. It is the outer court. Before I go there, Mr. Freeman, what you got? What verse you read? This was, um, yeah, God's word. God's word, GW? Yes, GW. Okay. Is it electronic? <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have a problem with electronic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Don't mess with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if the, the version went away, uh, but it is. Uh, out of court? Yeah, it's the out of court representing. Okay. The control of Jerusalem. Yes. Yes. Okay. It also is not only the outer court, but it also it can, some translation says courtyard, which means outside. It's not inside the temple. Now, let's, let's, let's look at this. But the court, which is without the temple, which leave out, which is outside the temple, this courtyard has no roof. All it has is walls. It has no roof. So it's outside. Watch this. If we go back to verse 1, uh, it talked about uh, measuring the temple, which is inside, and the altar, which is inside, the worshipers, which are inside. Everything that's inside is for your measure. Oh, God, help me. These Things on the inside are to be sacred. Catch what I said, ought to be sacred. Everything inside the temple is to be sacred. It is also to be dedicated to God. <laughs> and that's why he has a measure. But then he goes to verse number two, which is the court or the outer court, or the courtyard, which is outside the temple. Now we're going to get to see what's outside the outer court, which causes it not to be measured. <laughs> he says this, he says, leave out, omit, exclude the court outside the temple. From your measurement. I have you measured everything else but that. I need to omit that. I need to exclude this measurement of this outer court or the out, <laughs> outer temple or the courtyard. Don't measure it. The question is why? That's the question we want to answer the text. This part of the text. Why not measure the outer court? Did you hear the hand up? Yes. Yes, it was given to Mm-hmm.
downstream, whatever. <laughs> you, you, you there. <laughs> you in the house. <laughs> you exactly in the house. <laughs> they were not to uh, measure the outer court. And the reason why, the other reason why, uh, it had no part of the temple. It had no part of the temple. Watch this. It, had, it was to be a model. It was to be modeled. According to the model, either of Solomon or Zerubbabel's temple, it was to be modeled. It was supposed to be like that. And it was not like those temples. And I said this, I think it was Sunday, or oh, maybe Sunday before last. It was Sunday. When I talked about uh, pattern, you have to go by a pattern. So Solomon's temple, Zerubbabel's temple, was the pattern of what the temple was to be like. This outer court was not like that. And, and, and Nicholas Teresa said this, uh, it, it had no regard to being measured. Uh, the reason, another reason why, first of all, before I go there, am I very, yes. This word Gentile in the text means heathens. This word, he, Gentile, means heathens. These heathens had or brought pagan ceremonies. These are people who did not have a life with Christ. Or, uh, uh, well, really, they were believers. And they were uh, a disconnect. I will use that word. Disconnect from believers. They did, not, they did not believe as believers. They were not believers. And they just brought in all kinds of ceremonies. All, what's it, I'm going to use the word, all kinds of spirits. And so therefore, all this was in the outer court. And that's why Jesus tells John, don't mess with this. Because it is. It is. Evil ceremonies. It is not pertaining to anything that is God. <laughs> that pertained to anything, it did not pertain to anything that was a God. It was all evil ceremonies. And I just do it this way, it could be, be more uh, acclimable. Uh, they were doing stuff like worshiping Buddha, Isaac Muhammad. And all those false gods, and they did not re, uh, worship the true and living God. So God, Jesus tells John, don't you mention that. It's a waste of your time. They are life without God. <laughs> they have no intention of serving God. They have no mind of serving God. And they have brought in the outer court ungodly ceremonies. Hmm. And watch this, this out of court, watch this, Sister Teresa, and some of y'all might know this. We used to have it, the old star had a place called the Annex. It was not connected to the church. <laughs> but it's the side of the church. This out of court was outside the temple. They call it an Annex. And in the Annex, ungodly stuff was going on. In the annex. <laughs> and so by this going on, watch this, and God starts to abandon them because of ungodly worship. <laughs> ungodly ceremonies. And God disconnects himself from them. And since he disconnects himself from them, he says, don't even measure them. <laughs> don't even, don't you, don't even, again, don't even waste your time. There, that's just not even uh, worth even trying to measure because they have no mind. Watch it. They have no mind to change. Mm. Wow. Let me do this. and you, you can catch up with me or have comments. Those who worship in the outer court are either such as worship in a false manner or watch this, with hypocritical hearts. Hypocritical hearts. 
That word hypocritical, uh, hypocrite means pretenders. These persons pretended. They did not have a heart for God. They did not have a mind for God. And so they were in hypocritical, they had a hypocritical heart and they were in false worship mm, of idols. <laughs> of idols. Wow. And so that being said, God rejects these persons and, watch, and finds them among his enemies. Not his friends, his enemies. Wow. Are there any comments? Any Adams? Yes, ma'am. Watch this, 2 Timothy 3 and 5, right? Yes. He uses the word, Paul uses the word in 2 Timothy 3 and 5. He says, have it a form. Mm -hmm. Look like yes. God. Mm -hmm. But inwardly, there are not God. Mm -hmm. he, had, he says they have the form. Mm -hmm. Can I go further? They dress up like saints. Mm -hmm. They look like saints. Mm -hmm. But what, what, what Paul says, God looks at the interior. Where everybody looks at the exterior. Yes, he says, I actually literally look at the heart and I find out they are, have the form of it, but they don't really, they're really not of God. Wow. And I'm finding out in the, in the 21st century church, there's a whole lot of folk who have the form of God, isn't it? But they're denying the power. The power. The power. Did it say the power? The power of God. Because when you have, when you have the power of God, it's going to bring some transformation. It's going to have a change of heart, a change of mind, a change of direction. All this is going to take place when you have the heart of God, the mind of God, the spirit of God. Oh, there it is. The spirit of God. Can I just go back to Sunday for a minute? That's why it, it causes us, the people, I want to suggest us rather, suggest us that we mean to stay on the wheel. Yes. yes. Stay on the wheel. Stay on the wheel. I was talking to somebody the other day. I said, I said, I said, I'm still on the wheel. Yeah. I'm still on the wheel. Yeah. And I need to keep working with me while I'm on the wheel. Yes. As a matter of fact, I don't even get off the wheel. Right. <laughs> and so they had no mind, no will to operate in the will of God. And so they're operating in their flesh. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. The flesh is dangerous. It's a killer. Yes. Can I go this way? It's a spiritual killer. Yes. It will kill you spiritually. And so they operated in an ungodly mind, in an ungodly fashion, and they were spiritually dead. I don't know about you, but, but, but I, I, I'm, I'm reminded of the psalmist. Uh, he talks about, don't take your spirit from me. He knows, he realizes that when he did sin, he had got himself disconnected from God. He had got himself disconnected from the spirit of God. And once he got Back with God. Watch this. Restored. Restored. Revived. Back to God. He says this. He says, don't take your spirit from me. He finds out, watch this. He finds out that while I did not have your spirit, I was miserable. <laughs> while I did not have your spirit, I felt dysfunctional spiritually. While I did not have your spirit, I found myself just, uh, I don't know what I was like. <laughs> because when you're miserable, you have no peace. When you're miserable, you have no joy. And he, he lost all his joy. But he found out, and this is very important for us, as we're on the wheel, as we're being rejuvenated, being restored, being revived, God will bring us back. Because when you restore furniture, you bring it back to the original. <laughs> and so what we need to do is, and we, we may, what's this, Sister Teresa? The same song years ago, take me back. Take me back to where I first received you. Because what has happened after the course of time, sometimes we become spiritually complacent. It's dangerous to become spiritually complacent. Dangerous. 
And so the songwriter wrote that song, I think it was Andre Crouch. I think it was. He says, take me back to the place where I first received you. Yes. <laughs> I didn't go back. I know I've been with you 20, 30 years, but I still need to go back because I have lost something while in these 20, 30 years. And I need to go back to where I first received you. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody does? I don't know which one of y'all was first. <laughs> she said, it's you. <laughs> now it's really Yes. Because yes. If you don't do a dela, you just said the uh, flesh was a spiritual killer. Yes. And a spiritual killer. Yes. So if we don't continue to deny the flesh and kill it, it's going to rise up and it's going to leave us. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Let me get her there. I was, uh, Yeah, Ooh, yes. It is the biggest thing. And we, I don't care how they say that we're going to kill Amen. Us, Amen. We have to be so careful that we don't become comfortable. Yes. Listening to, yes. to the flesh. Amen. You know, Amen. Because the flesh is saying, you know, I don't want to listen all. I feel like going to all this morning. Yes. Yeah. And if you listen long enough, we'll be kind of like, well, it's okay. <laughs> but no, I'm just, it's okay. But, uh, yes. You know, and before we know, we wonder, what happened to me? I'm just not feeling something. Yes. I'm not feeling like I used to or whatever. That's it. It's because we listen to the flesh so much. Yes. That it's caused us to be in that state comfortable. And we're exactly. being instead of continuing on, like you said, getting on the power of foot. Yes. Keep working on, keep working yes. on, you know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. I just did up all this, but this year for me. Yes. The, what's them to me? Better. Yes. That's just the word that's, that's people need to this year. Yes. Better. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. And as you said, I saw those hands. As, as, as you said, it, it brought me back to ever since Sunday. I've been, my prayer is God, keep me on the wheel. Yes. Keep me on the wheel. Mm -hmm. uh, I need you to take out everything in my life that's not of you. Mm -hmm. Make me better. Mm -hmm. Strengthen me where I'm weak. And you know what? It, it, it doesn't make a difference how, I'm going with what you just said. Mm -hmm. It makes no difference how long you've been in church. Mm -hmm. I grew up in church. And some of us grew up in church. Mm -hmm. But we still haven't arrived. There's a whole lot of work to be done. It is, it is, it is. And we have to recognize that and realize that and, and not be, as Demas Teresa said, and not be content or complacent or comfortable where we at. Oh, I've been in church all my life. Yeah, but I, is there improvement? Is there growth? And, I, and I, ever since Sunday, thank you, Jesus, I've been asking God, keep me on the wheel. Because it's so easy for the flesh to rise up yes. and get us off of the wheel. <laughs> so my daily prayer is, in 2023, keep me on the wheel. Yes, <laughs> keep me on the wheel. <laughs> Mr. Mary. I just want to say, the people don't feel me saying you don't either. <laughs> That's true. They don't feel nothing. Like, That's like, 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 Oh, come on, yes. <laughs> you just going through the most. Yes, right? yes, <laughs> yes. 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 You gotta go take your inventory. Yes. Yes. You you come just like everybody else, but you don't feel that. Yes. You go through the motions just like everybody else. Come on, come on, you know me and the Lord. You stand there praying. I'm just saying. I'm just in here. I'm just talking. But you don't feel that. Right. You don't feel His presence. You don't feel anything. Right. So you have to go back. Hallelujah. You got to go back and tell God, Lord. I need your spirit. Yes. 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 You got to see what, why the spirit is not connected. Yes. With you. That's right. That, that's what he do. Yes. That's his job. Exactly. So he's not going to leave anybody here. No, he's not. Thank you. Oh, God. He's not going to leave anybody here. Yeah, sometimes I would tell him we don't do like do, do, do. You yes. know, we'll come. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And nothing is wrong. But oh, boy, you better not take up too long. You better get in your word. You better start fasting. Yes. You better start doing the things that God right. because that spirit to be activated. Yes. 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 Because yes. if you told me to die, uh -huh. it will. It will. It will. And it takes a long time for you to get it back. You got to get it for sure. Yes. Just to come back like it's supposed to. You know what I mean? Yes, I do. 
Yes, I do. I, I, got, I got a word, but I got to write it down because I'll, I'll forget. Go ahead, Mr. Freeman. Then Sister Lisa. Yes. Did you have your head up first or did you just do it? No, no, no. Yeah, I, th I thought Jennifer did first. I can answer it. Go ahead. <laughs> Good question. Hold on, let me write this down. That's an excellent question. Watch this, Sister Cat. Israel. Good example. God kept warning Israel. Why are they in the wilderness? Over and over and warned them. God has patience. But his patience runs out. His patience ran out with the children of Israel. God is loving? Yes. God is merciful? Yes. God is even long-suffering? Yes. But the long-suffering runs out. And then the people in... I got another scripture. Just came to mind. Thank you, Lord. Uh, in Israel... Those people who started out in the wilderness died in the wilderness because they kept being rebellious. They used the word stiff neck, King James, which means stubborn, which means they did not succumb to what God said to do in order to get the promised land. And so he had taught them, and they died in the wilderness. And the next generation was the one who went in. So he does get taught. Yes, ma'am. I'll give you another thing. In Romans chapter 1, Talks about how that we just it's just time right now, where there were women with women, and men with men, men with men rather, and watch it. The Bible says, and the King James says, they have lost their natural affection, and so God turns them over to a reprobate mind, to what they were doing they thought was right, and since you think you you never listen to me, I'm gonna turn you over to yourself. Let me what you're saying. I'm going to turn you over to yourself. So, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Was that it? Okay. <laughs> Good question. Good question. Answer your question. Yes. Going to be a work there. You're not going to be comfortable. But when we get in that state of mind of being comfortable, then we're actually we gave up on the one that we said we trust. Mm -hmm. And now we're saying we got control of this. Mm -hmm. Now the reason I said that because I went into the I had an incident with that where the Lord was letting me know about my move that I'm getting ready to make. He was letting me know. He said the reason you got you got to move is really you didn't got comfortable. And my comfortable was this. I knew where my next income was coming to pay this bill, to pay this bill, to do this and do that and do this and do this. So how much of that was I asking God to help me what if I was in control and now I know where it's coming from. So he said, I have to move you out because if you have no need to trust me, no need to trust me, no need to come to me, what am I here for in your life? So you got to move. You didn't get comfortable. And that's one way we do know. And sometimes we say, am I comfortable? You're not, you're not for sure. Just really sit down and reflect on it. Mm -hmm. where you're at, how much you're going to him and asking him, Lord, uh, direct me oh. how to do this, or should I do this, and which way to go? How much are we doing of that? We're not doing a lot of that. That right there lets you know you didn't got comfortable. Yes. yes. Can I just connect with that? I'm connect that dot. What we have what we have done is stop being relying, stop relying on God yes. and rely on us. Yes. Can I just say this? It's dangerous. It's literally dangerous to rely on us and not rely on God. <laughs> he says, acknowledge him and all thy ways, and he shall direct thy path. He shall direct your way. <laughs> so therefore, when I acknowledge him, God, you got to do this. If you don't do it, I can't do it. If you don't do it, I'm going to go the wrong way. If you don't do it, I'm going to be, I'm going to be in the wrong direction. But watch this. Also, Simon said, the steps of good man, it means man or woman, are ordered by the Lord. 
Order my steps. That's what I say. Order my steps. <laughs> he says, the song says, in your word. Is that right? All my steps in the word. So therefore, I got I to get in the word so I can get right, proper direction, proper uh, 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 sense of, of where I need to go, what I need to do, and how I need to do it. Because yes, 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 yes. if I do not, I feel something there. <laughs> if I do not, I'm treading on dangerous ground. I have a tendency and a time to fall out of grace. Yes, yes, God. And so daily, I got to say, direct my path. Direct my steps. So I know what to do, how to do it. And even when to do it. Direct my steps. Woo, Jesus, this is good, y'all, again. I mean, I got all cats that can that. Thank you, Jesus. Mr. Mary's hand was first. So the Catherine. And I hold up for y'all, but Lisa, I, I forgot about you. For, uh, let me go to Lisa, then I'll go to y'all. Come on, Lisa. Um, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So yeah. if if you're riding on what happened before and it's comfortable, yeah. it's not even faith anymore. Yeah. It's That's You're right. riding on something different. And so it's got to stay uncomfortable. It's it's a new level of being out there on the road and knowing you're God. And then the other thing is about a pottery wheel. Uh -huh. When people get a, the clay on the pottery wheel, uh -huh. they'll pull it up, push it down, pull it up, push it down to get bubbles and impurities out of it. Yeah. And that's not comfortable. Uh -huh. Like you're, you're like a bowl. Nope, not right. right. Boop, boop, boop. And they're working that clay up and down, up and down, getting all in there, and getting it smooth and uniform and like he wants it. <laughs> I got to connect with Lisa for a minute. Yeah. Of course, I got here, I said mo. If there's going to be mo, there has to be, as you said, up and down. Bubbles cause this trouble. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <It does. laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and so he has to go, the potter has to go up and down to get all the bubbles out, get all the trouble out of our life <laughs> to make us right. <laughs> That's why there has to be shaping and molding. In the clay and on the wheel. <laughs> There's got to be. Ooh, okay. Thank you, Lisa. That's all good. Uh, 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 Mr. Murray. Uh, I just want to say, we know when we do wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, some of us don't have to do it. Amen. That's correct. Amen. That's right. Amen. Yes. And, uh, we know even when we are repent, we don't really. Yes. You know, but hallelujah. I want to say it is still the cause of surgery. Amen. Yes. Yes. I, I, I'm, I'm not talking about all the time going big to the sick and all that. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. But when I'm you. Yes. Amen. Yes. Every yes. day, uh -huh. every minute, you just think about it. Mm -hmm. You know, Pastor, we got to work on us. Yes. Uh -huh. That yes. we'll be fit for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, 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 if you don't have wind, don't you take that? Yes. Now, if you don't have it, no, it's not, you scared out the door, it's going to be open. Yes. You yes. And you can't see, you're going to get it. Right. And that was every day, every minute, we yes. have to be working on us. That's right. Man. That's right. So, um, you know, I'm like, Lord, there's a lot to do. Today, yes. but it has to do with plenty. Yes. Yes, it is. There's plenty. If you get busy for self, sometimes I ain't going to let you do it. That's you correct. You put other things in front of you to do your mind and don't do it that mm -hmm. than what you're supposed to do. Well, I should do what I don't do. Yes. Now, I'm saying. Yeah. But, um, I mean, we know. We know. We know to get, get helped out to the spirit. Yes. But, but how can we take our time? We just go for lazy. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. Mm -hmm. If we don't do what God. Yes, that's correct. Amen. Exactly. It should be a part of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it should be part of us. I don't know which one of y'all were next. She said, okay, you said, she said you were. <laughs> um, uh, I was just going to say that um, my boss, he depends on every day. His wife is on every day. And I told her, if you can't depend on every day, you got to depend on the Lord. Die. Then what you gonna do? Mm -hmm. His wife died. If 
them here at the same year my mom died. And now he, he, he don't know what to do. And I said, you can't depend on every bad. You got to depend on the Lord and quit worrying about everything. Put it in the hands of the Lord. Mm -hmm. But he still ain't listen. So I just said, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for you. It's like you knew. Because I can't make you. I can't make you. No. I know they say you gotta handle with certain people, but how do you actually come to handle with the right person? Because some people put on a good show of playing like that they're living for God. I have to come with many people, just as well as follow people online. And then a lot of people back away from me when I talk talking about Jesus. So I'm kind of confused on who to talk to. I'm at the point where I don't even talk to nobody. Well, I'm gonna give you I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you good help. We just talked about it. Ask God. God knows who you need to connect yourself with. Uh, if she just read, there are people who have the form of God in us, who look like and talk about it. they 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 with God, but in, but literally they're not. And that's what we got to ask God for direction uh, to choose our friends wisely. God, you lead me who to connect with and who not to connect with. And you ask him, I promise you, he's going to answer that prayer. Yes, he will. He will. So that, that, that's my answer to that. <laughs> yes. Yes, ma'am. Somebody else had their hands up? Yes, I was just going to teach. I witnessed to what Jennifer was saying about being comfortable in a you know, situation. I can have it. I'm, you know, I got everything. You know, I, I can have it. Yes. God will move me out of that comfort zone. <laughs> So now, he gets your attention to where you're totally, yes. and when I say completely, like, relying on him, mm -hmm. yeah, he'll get you back. Yes. Yeah. Even when we do get comfortable, you know, whatever it may be, say it is a true, born again, a child of God, God will get you out of that comfort zone to grow you, to yes. you to grow. Yes. Even if, it, and it, and it's not good that she said, you know. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> In Psalm 118, he said this, it's better put your trust in God than put your trust in man. Better put your trust in God than put your trust in princes. And so literally what the psalmist is saying, he said, don't trust them, trust him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just, it just came to me and I was flipping through that. He said, yes ma'am.
It's so hard. It's so hard. So I was sitting here thinking about the souls of those people as we study in this. Just sitting here thinking about this sad and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. And you said that. Let me go to the rest of what it is first. He says, This is, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot 42 months. What this is, they did not repent. They had not a mind to repent. And so God causes judgment yes. on these Gentiles or these heathens. It is very dangerous to not repent yes. when you know the truth or been given the truth or you've read the truth and not repent when you know where you're at. They knew where they were at, but they, did not, they refused to repent. So he allowed them to travel on the city 42 months, which is, I'm going to ask you a question about that. That 42 months is half of seven years, period, which is three years and a half. They did this. But there was judgment. Watch this. <laughs> Though they, I do this way, the rebelled nations who did not repent when warned by the trumpet of judgment, though they were headed for judgment, the Gentile nations are given not only the court of the Gentiles, but the holy city to tremble 42 months in that, have that seven year period. Judgment. Yes. They're doing that and it's really they're headed for judgment. Yes. <laughs> Christ has allowed them to do this. Yes. Even to the holy city, Jerusalem. Yes. He allowed that. But there comes judgment after this because they think they're doing right. Mm -hmm. They're thinking they're all right. Mm -hmm. But they did not realize that judgment is coming. They will be judged by what they did not do. I reminded, I'm reminded of what Nicholas Teresa said last week that Elder Walker said. These angels are sending messages back to heaven. Yes. And these angels saying they have, they have refused to repent. They send that up to heaven. <laughs> not that God don't see it, but it, they're doing their job. <laughs> And it's dangerous to have a hard heart and not repent and not change and not turn. Yes, ma'am. I wanted to add to that because you brought that up. Because I believe that the Bible says that the Lord will Yes. You know, um, exactly. I have God sends that anxious to nudge us to do this or yes. tell us to do this and we don't. Yes. Then, you know, they send that report back. Yes. Know. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. That same report. Like you said, God knows. Yes. So, yes. Mm -hmm. They send that report back of, of uh, fake worship, mm -hmm. non repentance. Right. They send all that back up to heaven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They'll sit down to encourage us to repent. Mm -hmm. They sit down, encourage us to worship and, mm -hmm. and praise. And all of that, and our adoration to God. Mm -hmm. But when we don't do it, mm -hmm. they send that message back to God. Right. They refuse to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and refusal is dangerous. I'll keep you that word dangerous on it. <laughs> that refusal to do that, when we are, when we are summoned or, or, or told mm -hmm. and we don't do it, it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's dangerous. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. On uh, uh, 
I'm going to hit on what you just said, but Ms. Angel, in a minute, I'm going to hit on it. It just hit me. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> How these angels, he just said, El Walker said, these angels sit down. Watch what I'm going to see. Watch what we're going to see in verse number three. Anybody on verse two? Before I come to three. Okay. Look at three. I will give power. I will give authority to my two witnesses. And they shall prophesy. Listen to this. A thousand two hundred and three scores. A thousand two hundred and sixty days. Sackcloth. The code and sackcloth. These messengers, watch this. These messengers, it's been, it's been said, these me two mess messengers can be different persons. But it's more so, I believe, these two I'm going to tell you Enoch and Elijah. The reason why is because those two persons did not see death, they were translated. Up to heaven. And it's been said that they that God sent these two down. Listen to this. <laughs> that they should prophesy. That word prophesy, they should preach. 1,260 days. Which means three and a half years. Or 42 years. Months. They're the preach. Watch this. <laughs> they are sent down to preach, encourage, exhort, exalt all this for this little time. Now, watch this. So, the cat, you asked that question earlier. God gives three and a half years for them to get right. Isn't that a long time? 42 months. He sends these two messengers. I will call them angels. Down to earth. To preach. This little time. To encourage the saints. To do right. To get right. To be right. To think right. To act right. To walk right. All this little time. He gives them time. To get right. How merciful our God is. Amen. How loving our God is. How concerned our God is about us. And our lifestyle. Right. <laughs> a loving God. Three and a half years. These two messages are sending messages and preaching. Encouraging, uplifting. People do right. Three and a half years. Half of a seven year period. Yes, ma'am. And I'm just gonna, I was going to say, but look at how God, that's three years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> look how he is nowadays. Yes. Look how long suffering he has had yes. been. Yes. Already, you know, years and years. Absolutely. Know, just merciful. Yes. Because it's not, he doesn't, you know, it's not as good as it is your parents, but. The years that you see, you know, different ones and, you know, just loved ones and different ones you're praying for, just years and years have gone by, and, you know, yeah. God's just merciful. He is. He is. So, is. so, so man, that's it. That word is so, uh -huh. so merciful. Uh -huh. <laughs> I want to emphasize that so. Uh -huh. <laughs> so merciful. Uh -huh. Yes, to, toward us. Uh -huh. Yes. Wow. Uh -huh. Wow. That, 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 that's, that's something. That's something. Mm -hmm. 42 months. Three and a half years. Mm -hmm. 360 days. Mm. Wow. Oh, anybody else want to add, add on the front? I want to talk about the clothing for a minute. Just for a minute. I want to talk about the clothing for a minute. If there's another add on or questions as relates to the early part of the verse. Notice he says, they're clothed in sackcloth. This word sackcloth is it, it, it's a rough, coarse yes. <laughs> garment. And one says it's a burlap. Mm -hmm. Burlap. Y'all know what burlap bags look like. <laughs> rough, rough on the skin. 
these persons were, were in clothed in sackcloth. Watch this. The question I asked the text is, and I'm asking before us all, why were these witnesses clothed in sackcloth? Go ahead. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Would you go say something? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, in my understanding, I, from past Sunday school teachers, <laughs> This sackcloth garments made an expression of penance, humility, and mourning. Mourning. Because if you go, if I go to the book of Job, when Job was in sackcloth and ashes, he mourned over his losses. He mourned of the loss of his children. He, lost, he mourned over the loss of his livestock. Let me say this. These, watch this, these two witnesses came not to be vindictive. They did not come to be vindictive. <laughs> the witnesses are mourning because of the wretchedness and wickedness of the world and God's judgment on it. They, 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 their garments were to show who they were. They were Repentance, they were in humility, mm -hmm. and they were also mourning over the, the lives and the hearts of the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm great, before I go back to go to you, Mr. Travis, mm -hmm. it was also when I say humility, they were not heavy clothes that were caused to be arrogant. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go old school for a minute. The old preachers would always don't cross I got no. <laughs> they would always dress in black. <laughs> they would always dress in black or dark brown. I remember my great uncle, Uncle Daniel, would wear a lot of times wear a black suit or a dark brown suit. That's all they would have. We think it's all they had. But those that, that would keep them in humility. <laughs> We're a lot faster than them, but it's all right. <laughs> But that's what they did to keep them humble. Yes. Keep them in, 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 in the right perspective with God. Um, and they had a deep affection for the people with a low and distressed state for the church and the interest of the saints. Mm. <laughs> and they were to bring, listen to this, they were to bring further warning of judgment they were, when they brought the judgment they were with broken hearts they had to, they had to preach this and, and encourage them as well but also had to preach judgment too and it broke their hearts to have to preach judgment on a world who didn't want to repent that's how they had a heart for the people <laughs> okay I'm done I could go further but I'm not going right there <laughs> go ahead Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. I was just going to say, too, that because they knew what the judgment was going to be. Yes. And how destructive it was going to be. Yes. Too. And that, you know, would make anybody more, you know. Yes, you would. Even let us know. Would you have a heart for the lost, those unsaved? Yes. Unsafe, you yes. Know? Sometimes it, it, you know, it's me, you know. Yes. Sometimes, yes. you know, 
make me want to cry. Yes. Or, you know, I um, see some the other day, you know, and it just, it literally just broke my heart. Yes. And I said, God, you know, I can see, you know, how he said sin is like a stinks in his nose. Yes. And uh, what I thought of the day is just like, oh my God, it just literally just, it made me sick. Yes. <laughs> to see. Mm hmm. Exactly, exactly. And, and these, these witnesses were speaking for God. Yes. And they were telling what they know. <laughs> yes, and, and as you said that, it, 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 it grieves us. Mm -hmm. Our hearts, we see people, I'm using the word, gravitate to the word of God mm -hmm. and to the teachings of God mm -hmm. and the direction of God. It grieves our spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, that they don't adhere. And all the stuff that's going on. Amen. Uh, they don't even, some of it just don't, it don't bother them. There's no shame. There's no shame. Yeah. None at all. Uh, I'm saying, well, you see all this going on and you, you still want to do what you're doing? Really? Wake up. You sleep. You spiritually sleep. Wake up. Yeah, yeah. It, it hurts. It hurts. It really does. It hurts. Anyone else? All right. All right, I'm done then. I'm done. This was good. another good one. Yes. Another good one. Yes. Another good one. So next week, we'll look at the olive tree, <laughs> four and five, next week. Uh, so we'll thank y'all so much for your inputs. Uh, it means much to me that I don't do, that I don't do all the talking. <laughs> And I greatly appreciate that. Uh, I, I, I just love when you have your add on all your questions. Uh, it's a delight for me personally. Uh, and I greatly appreciate y'all doing that. Uh, are there any prayer requests? One of them I want to pray for is Jamar. Uh, yeah. uh, oh, you can make that Hammond. 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 Uh, I'm going to probably start what happened to him on Monday night. Uh, and and there, there's notice something here. And, and, and I'm going to get to him. Uh, I'm going to get you in a minute. Notice something. Now, everybody now is praying. Everybody is praying now. This boy is touching on lions. And, they, and I saw him, they had a thing on him on TVN. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was, he was, and he's a Christian. And he was talking about people coming to Christ and all that. It was on TVN uh, last night, matter of fact. Yeah, last night. Yeah. We're going to pray for him. Uh, I did see something this morning. No, yeah, this morning. No, this afternoon before I come to church. There is improvement. There is improvement. And I, I think God is up to something. I went through what happened to him. I believe God is up to something. And I believe God will show the world that prayer does work. Okay, I, I, I feel something when I did that. When I did that, when I did that, when I did that. <laughs> God is up to something. And let the people know, the world know, that when my people come together and yeah. pray, on, I'm going to reveal on. myself. I'm going to manifest uh -huh. myself and let myself, let them know that I am real and I'm alive yeah. and well. Yeah. I'm better than Buddha. Yeah. I'm better than yeah. Isaac Muhammad. Because yeah. you can pray to me and you'll see me move and you'll see some yeah. positive results. Yeah. Watch what God does. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that. Yeah. 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 I believe that. Yeah. God is up to something. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It is in time. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Just said it just messed me up. Right, right. <laughs> uh, I'm, 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 so, Cap, you hear me? I need prayer for one of my kids and pray for me because I need my more and more faith. Okay. <laughs> okay. I understand. I understand. I understand. Yes, ma'am. We do that. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Three. I was just going to say that uh, I see. Yes, ma'am. People are speaking out now. Yes. And, and that just really, you know, caught my attention. But um, I want to ask a prayer for um, Nathan, Nicole Johnson, a grandson. 
Yes. We have our surgery today. Yes. He's been in the hospital since birth, I believe. And, you know, and he had his first heart surgery today. And uh, we can't do the surgery, but just keep them in the prayers. Okay. Prayer. Nico, right? Nico. Yeah. yeah. Nicole. Nicole. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Okay. Yes, sir. And my sister. Okay. Gotcha. All right. First of all, our cousin, Shalanda Sanford. Okay. Uh, she's the one in that car accident last night. Um, oh, really? Yeah. So she was a car collision and on the road. Uh -huh. Okay. Serious condition. But she is improving. Okay. Most gracious and all wise Father, we again thank you for your goodness, your kindness, and your tender mercy, and all of your bountiful and wondrous blessings you have stored upon us. And even what you are yet to do, we thank you. Thank you for the night's lesson, God. Thank you for the night's Bible study, God. Thank you for the inputs. Thank you, God. Continue to bless in the Bible study, God. Continue to enhance the Bible study, God that we'll grow and learn uh, more about you, God, that will help us to stay in, in tune and in line with you, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I pray you're blessed tomorrow. Thank you for what you're doing for him. We pray you continue to touch his body with your mighty hand of healing. Oh, God, and not only touch him, but touch the family. Strengthen them, God, as well. Not only the family, but the, the, his teammates. Strengthen them as well, God. Touch God in the name of Jesus. God bless Nicole uh, Johnson, God, who had surgery today. Bless and the recovery, God. That the recovery shall spring forth speedily, God. Thank you for what you're doing. And even what you're going to do, we give you thanks and a praise in advance. Thank you, sir. Bless in a mighty and an abundant way. God, we pray, God, you'll bless Irene. Touch and move by your mighty hand. We bind the hand of the enemy in the name of Jesus. God, move by your mighty hand and move by your mighty power. Touch in the name of Jesus. God, I pray you bless Brother Jada's cousin that was in a an auto accident on last evening. We pray, God, we thank you for the improvement. Continue to improve, God. Continue to bless, God. The, uh, the recovery shall spring forth speedily, God. Bless in the mighty and an abundant way, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, bless all the sick. Name by name and one by one. We speak and declare healing, health, strength. Be upon their bodies. Name by name and one by one, God. Those that are going through, God, lift the burden, lift the load, God. Move by your mighty hand. Move by your mighty power, God. Bless Sister Karen. Give her patience, God. And bless the, the kids, God. Uh, touch their hearts. Touch their minds, God. Bless them and move them in a mighty but way, God. In their hearts, in their minds, God. In Jesus' name. Oh, God, I pray you bless the upcoming service on Sunday. Be it everything be done and said that will bring you honor and bring you glory, God. Have your way in our worship on Sunday, God. We bind every hindering spirit, every spirit that's not of you, God. We bind it and come against it in the name of Jesus. We lose, God, your anointing, your presence, your Chicago glory, God, in our worship on Sunday, God. We be the same spirit, the same mind, God. Move by your mighty hand and move by your mighty power, God. Help us as your people, God, to be led and guided by you and you alone, God. Keep us as your people on the potter's wheel. Shape us continuously. Mold us continuously, God. It may be tough on us, God, but continue to mold us and shape us, God. In the name of Jesus, move mighty in our lives. That we'll be a people you'll call for these last and even days. And live a life that is pleasing unto you, God. And God, as we leave your house and go our various ways, get in every vehicle, bind the mechanical problem, dispatch your angels round about with your people, God. Cover us with your blood. Give us traveling mercies.
These blessings we ask in Jesus' mighty and awesome name we pray and we do thank you. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you, Lord keep you. This is our prayer. Until next time, Lord, say the same. Blessings.